Good morning. I'm Jim McGinnis. And I have something uh, this morning called uh, Small Revolutions. Um, parts of this one you may recognize. Um, lately I've been wrestling with the hard fact that ending a story isn't the same as finishing one. And, uh, this work has 40 years in it. Um, I think it's finally finished. We'll see. But I hope it moves you in some strange way. Anyway, this is Small Revolutions. The threatening storm has cooled things. We're driving around with the windows down. There's a squall line stretching across this town. The three of us and my old Ford, I'm not quite sure what we're heading toward. There in the front seat, she and I. Labrador between us looking worried for the sky. Rosary in my pocket, shamrock hanging from my neck, heart on my sleeve. There's a credible threat of a crash or a wreck into something I believe. Mardi Gras beads swaying on the mirror, hula girl dancing on the dash, black dog barking at the lightning flash. She brushes her hair behind her ear and calms that old doll's thunder fear. No worries, Cicero, it's just the way that Florida goes says a girl with the big yellow rose tattooed across her shoulder. Should have been a farmer, I muttered, feeling rather disabused. I remember that movie, she said. Should have been a farmer, Red. The woman with the wispy hair sat amused. In the remnants of the summer afternoon, we turned off A1A and crossed the gray lagoon on the Ernest Cohenhoven Causeway. She was quiet for a while, having nothing much to say. Soon she started messing with the radio dial, searching for something. Her footprints on the windshield made me smile. Didn't Jefferson want us all to be farmers, she asked. Yeah, I said, nodding. Declaring my independence, I crawled across the bridge with native disdain for traffic. She sang along with Credence. Have you seen the rain? Who will stop it? Where do you get that farmer stuff anyway? Homer? Cicero. Oh, Cicero. And it may have been a ratio. Well, that changes things. I shrugged and said he said a farmer is a free and learned man. That it ain't just about the plow, you understand. Wide open spaces, she sang. Room to make the big mistakes? Yeah, that's how it goes. Then she glanced back over towards me and said, there's a guy right on your ass, and I'm not sure why we're hanging out here in the left-hand lane. I laughed sadly and moved over. My bitter sense of right away was all in vain. So much for small revolutions. So what's going on with you? With me? I know there's something on your mind. I shrugged and weaved across the center line. Well, aside from the weight of our ancestors' deeds and the fate of our descendants, the things I've done and failed to do, waiting for my penance, not much. You're so Catholic, she said, reaching over and gently slapping me upside the head. I said, I can't seem to lose these American blues. Turn here, she said, pointing. I made a left and then a right onto Melbourne Avenue. Mellencamp sang Little Pink Houses as we chugged along behind a bus. More lightning to the west reminded us of what was coming. Again, the dog stirred. When the song was over, she spoke again. I read once depression comes from living too high in the mind. Up there, there is no exit we can find. I didn't say I was depressed. I said I had the blues. But she kept on, like a dragonfly caught in our garage desperately flying all around. He can't begin to know a sure way out is down. That was Harrison, wasn't it? Maybe, except for the dragonfly part, that was me. I do love this truck, she said, patting on the vinyl seat, then hugging Cicero hard. We rounded the turn toward home and pulled up in the yard. The dog jumped out and she walked right through the house to the porch only stopping to pour herself a glass of tea. 
And there she sat, staring out at the witness tree with the motorcycle tire swing that I had painted green, like I do, she says, most everything. I sat down inside with Black Dog, and from the living room I could hear Tom Petty sing, first breakdown, then the refugee thing. And yes, we made our way out, and she turned to me and asked, who ain't a refugee? We all got to fight to be free. I said again, yeah. That's what it all comes down to. Hitchens in the kitchen, babe. Petty on the porch. What was that? Come on now. We need to read and listen to all that heaven will allow. Move our feet when we dance and take the bloody chance to think for ourselves somehow. I said, they didn't teach you that in Texas public schools. Oh, I don't know. We Austin kids can lead or follow, or even play the greater fools. Freedom, she said, is as fragile as a dozen fresh eggs, then turned and caught me staring at her legs, and she laughed at me. Oh, my prince of castaways, where is your heart these days? I know where your mind is. Hey, I'm down, but I'm not dead. She laughed again and kept on preaching of taking a knee and making a stand, of healing scars upon the land, about reframing history and a bunch of other righteous stuff. I said they buried all the dead in Robert Lee's front yard. I reckon that's enough. Not sure I follow. Stay with me then. Stay with you? Oh, bless your democratic wish, I said. But I think we, we're lost between our lust for freedom and the longing to be led caught somewhere between our yearning and our dread. Oh, this place, we never seem to know who's to blame and who's to bless. But her infidelities and flaws can't make me love her less. Still, I can't shake them. I can't seem to lose these American blues. So? So of all our country's stories, sins and glories, we only tell in remnants. That flag won't fly. I lament the past we've forgotten with a vengeance. For with it goes the promise, the best of all creeds, a vow we're bound to break, a zero sum of deeds. Karma then. Karma? In the purest sense, she explained, standing by the door. Is forgetting equal to the burden of remembering? Who knows what destiny has in store? But maybe... The weight we bear doesn't make us different. It just might make us something more. The creed is worth remembering, I answered, even if we can't live up to it. I guess you're right. But babe, want to kill the blues? How about we do without the breaking news, for starters? I said, okay. Maybe today's the day we stay away from the phone and that TV. Just you and Cicero and me. Sort of. Sounds like prime. She smiled and sang my single favorite line from Dear Abby, and we laughed in spite of ourselves. You are what you are, and you ain't what you ain't. Then she stared up at the ceiling that I had painted haint to keep the angry ghost away. Haint, you mean with all our angels and saints we need painted porches and bowls of rice and round? You got more love and luck than you could possibly live down. Should I apologize? No, dear heart. The sky lightened and my mood took a turn and she walked outside to check the orchids and staghorn ferns. It seems the storm blew over. That's something each Floridian learns. No matter how they got here, you never know when hope returns. I'm late, she said to me without turning. Late? I'm late, dumbass. Remember Crescent Beach? I smiled and stared and listened through the screen, thinking about St. Augustine and our trip to the ancient city in the spring. But the girl who wouldn't wear my ring left me hanging, hanging on to that last thing. Hey, why do we have two statues of St. Francis, she asked, standing there beneath the oaks. Well, that one the neighbors gave us and the other was my folks. She nodded. I walked outside and stood beside her, and the dog wandered off. She smiled and leaned into me. Stay with me, indeed. We'll be here 
with you and your blues, she said, rubbing her belly, through whichever hurricane, gust of wind, or band of rain. And she spoke no more of dragonflies or refugees, just sipped her cold green tea and watched the tire swing move gently in the breeze. Tom sang, here comes my girl. Hope you like it. It's Jim McGinnis, Fairwinds.